<sighs> All right, so, um, so Pastor Oluwa Damilari Adibwe uh, just passed, and uh, everybody mourns in their own interesting ways, and uh, whatever it is that makes them feel whichever way they feel. But so I get asked all sorts of questions, um, press people trying to do interview, and I was even asked to write a tribute, and I don't really know exactly what to put in the tribute because there's just too much. I mean, um, it's been in my life. I'm 38 this year. I'll be 39 later on. Um, it's been everything. Even the aircraft that is flying above us, my, my first every experience has been there. Um, every single experience, we've, we've, we've done it, we've had it together. Uh, we went to <laughs> we went to the same schools, um, nursery and primary school, uh, staff nursery and primary school, um, uh, Unilag. We were in command secondary school, but not together. Even when he was leaving, um, once we got the hint that he was going to go to England to continue, um, I was, I mean, I used to joke with him that if he doesn't take me along, his plane will crash. I mean, he had to report me to dad. That's the only way we could actually eventually get me to go to England as well. Even in England, we went to the same school. First plane experience from Lagos to Joss, we went together. Um, we even got married on the same date, um, just different uh, years apart, December 28th. I even had to beg my wife because our, our first child, this one first child is born on the um, on the 3rd or 4th of December. Um, I had to beg my wife to make sure we get into 24 hours of the next day so that our children would not be born exactly the same day, just a year apart, literally. Um, so yeah, when I get asked, what am I gonna miss? I'm gonna miss everything, man. I mean, this guy pushed the pushed the boundaries on on absolutely everything. Um, Ada is class captain in nursery and primary school. Secondary school, he was house prefect. When we got to this white man's land in England, he, <laughs> he was the first. I mean, the school has been there since 1886. This guy was the first African Nigerian. Ed boy that our school has had. I mean, this school has a plaque on the wall that states every single Ed boy. And for hundreds of years, there was no, I mean, he just kept breaking. Let me imagine the pressure. Everywhere you go, people are like, why can't you be more like your brother? Why can't you be more like your brother? And, and he's just there. He's just breaking boundaries. He's not even struggling. He's just doing his thing. Um, he was even the first miracle child. I'm just the proof. I'm like a backup evidence to show that yes, God can allow you have a baby after three cesarean session. Um, I just came as a proof. He's always been the one. Yeah, different realities will hit later on. This is just me trying to process my own thoughts. What's going to happen? I mean, he plans the best holidays. He taught me about having a backup of a backup. How to have a plan A, plan B, plan C, plan D, just in case anything fails. Um, you always have a backup plan. And that really, really helped me a lot everywhere I found myself. A lot. So that you literally never stranded anywhere you are. Um, it kept a time more than anyone else that I've met. Um, is a stickler for time. I even think, um, I think my dad might prefer him when it comes to someone that keeps to time. Um, I'm mean, a great guy all around. A fantastic sense of uh, dressing, even from command secondary school. Um, I mean, to traveling and, I mean, he traveled more than me and he met people. He showed you how to link with people. He will probably have friends in literally every nation he's been to, from the car renter guy to the hotel concierge. Um, I mean, I, for example, got to Dubai and the guy that was renting cars to us was like, oh, yeah, I know your brother. So, you know, that makes it easy. You don't even have to pay because probably your brother has uh, some balance with us that he hasn't used up. And he, would, he doesn't care who you are. And he would demand excellence and, and, 
and top-notch service from you. Um, and I would expect you to do what you need to do at all times. Um, it doesn't believe in Nigerian factor. It doesn't believe in any weird factor. He believes in God's factor. So you have to do things properly and do it right. I had a conversation with my wife already. Um, I have three daughters. Um, but now the pastor is, uh, is going to, you know, he's handed his own race and gone to be with God. And I have six children in total. Um, I mean, so his own children become mine as well. Uh, that's, that's, uh, can't even question that. And then, of course, I uh, try my best to be there for them in every, in everything from, um, residers in school, whatever it is that they're doing, performances, um, sports day, every single event, holidays, um, medical checkups, whatever it is, um, you know, responsibility increased, but it's the least you could do to honor that dude um, for what he has done. And I'm not going to take up his own preaching engagements because I don't have that voice. Um, <laughs> he's the evangelist. I just tell you the truth, point blank. Um, people scream when he's preaching. People are silent when I'm speaking because um, I have to, I hit you with the truth and it's nothing but the truth, so help me God. And people don't like truth, so it takes a while for them to swallow it, so maybe that's why they're silent. Yeah, ask about legacies and what I believe is left um, behind. I think it's just a demand for us to do best and do better in absolutely everywhere we find ourselves and whatever we are doing. Um, in ministry, uh, as a father, as a, as a brother, as a Nigerian, um, as everything, because he, you know, when he travels, he changes people's conception um, of, of who Africans or Nigerians are, because he doesn't believe that you should be, if someone created a stereotype, his own assignment is to change it for the better. And yes, um, it's in heaven, and it's challenging us all to actually make sure we finish well. Um, the Bible says that uh, to live is Christ, so while we're here living, we should live for Christ. Everything we do should emulate and show Christ. Um, but to die is gain, um, as in it's gain for us because we gain heaven. But if you tweak that is and put an H in front, is, is as in Christ is gain. Um, for, for him to gain a soul. So in as much as possible, we shouldn't make it a solo ride. We're meant to take as many people and influence as many lives um, as we go. I mean, now it's past, it's going to create so much, uh, it's creating so much noise that everyone has to also check themselves. I've been in, well, I've been in on earth for 38 years, but in Christianity, more or less on the same time. And I've seen this and I understand that, um, body soul and spirit the flesh is just an instrument uh, which is the body the soul is what matters to god um but then you have to make sure that your spirit connects back to the creator at all times so that you use it as a guiding light for the decisions you make while you're here it is your spirit that's supposed to prick you and touch your consciousness for absolutely everything you do if you do anything wrong and your spirit is not pricking you then you don't have the right spirit. Um, <laughs> Bible even makes it clear, paraphrasing, that those who link with the spirit of God, it is many of it is those people that they will be called the sons and daughters of God. So if you have the wrong spirit, uh, that means you'll be called the sons and daughters of the devil. And not today, Satan. Uh, not now, not ever. Um, and I just wish everyone would take a cue from this. It is not how long, it is how well, and then anybody can go at any time. And for whoever, um, young adults, ministry or not ministry, just generally anyone, I think we should live our lives on a day-to-day -day basis, believing that that day might be our last. So we are ready at all times. Um, plan it out. Be, if you're in a relationship, love the people properly. Be honest with them, be open with them. Let people know your passwords because somebody might need to help you. Uh, find people you're accountable to, 
Be honest to yourself. Be honest with them. If you have any weaknesses, share it. If you can't share it, share it with God. Yeah? So you can pull out of it. It's simple. The world is just nothing but a vapor. It would go. Even some people say we can ask God to bring him back. Sure. The question I have is what happened to Lazarus? Is he still here now? So everybody has a time. All right? I pray that we all meet him one day. But that decision is purely ours. If we ensure we live right. Because um, the second coming can be God actually. Jesus turning up in the clouds. Or it could be you on your bed. Or in a car. Or on your way walking somewhere. That might be our own second coming. So we should just be ready. God bless you guys man. I'm done. <laughs>